Mary, did you ask a question about um, how can I transition from a practice sound to a sound which is more pleasant to listen to? Yes, that was my question. All right. Do you, and you're okay with playing a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Um, and maybe it's just a matter of, of confidence and practice, but it seems like, you know, I listen to, to fiddle tunes on YouTube and it just sounds, I don't know, more melodic or more like music than what I'm playing. But yeah, this is um, Wildwood Flower. <laughs> Nice. Look at all those claps. That that was really pretty. But so I, I don't have any groundbreaking suggestions, but one thing I would suggest for f kind of getting, uh, exploring your sound is, the first thing I would suggest is dynamics, and which is volume. So playing with, so I would play it quiet, super quiet, and then super loud, and then start to play with subtle ways that you could swell it like yeah i see that so that would be that's one really big thing uh, the a super general like thing to do is to just once you know a tune like you know that tune now that's really good is to just explore it take like a fiddle journey with it and yeah, so the, I think that the, this is a kind of a hard thing to teach, but basically start to explore with the tune. And it, it's really like a lifetime long thing. Like this, this is a, a somewhat simple tune, but I still play it and come back to this and tunes like it to practice things that, that I'm working on. And so... So like one fiddle journey thing you can t do is to transpose it. You know, I, I say that a lot, but, but it'll start to open up the musicality of things. So, so far the suggestions are transposing and playing with volume. And, and, and let's, I want to go back to the volume point and show you a little exercise. And you guys can all, if you ever fiddled out, you can do this. It's, so we, we, t we can play quiet, we can play medium, we can play loud. Those are like very general. But we can work on the transition called crescendo and decrescendo. And with a simple exercise, so just playing eighth notes. I call this, um, uh, what do I call it? Soft, loud, soft. So just starting with little quiet eighth notes, barely using the bow, lengthening until it's almost annoyingly loud and then getting quiet and then getting loud again let's do one more round And this is a simple exercise, but you can play with it in a lot of ways. You can make your arc like quicker, like. Right. And then doing this will, will add a lot of feeling to the music you play, this little exercise. And as usual, I would say, once you get the idea, try it on a scale. You know, you could do D major. And I would say, like, this is a really fun exercise in terms of sound. Try to, like, you're, we're making music, we're making sound. Enjoy the, the, this little sonic thing you can do. Um, yeah, I think 
think it's the musicality that that I'm missing. So I think those are good suggestions for me to work on. Cool. There's a lot, and 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 it's not a, a super straightforward thing. So I, I I'm glad that that might help you. Uh, the the other thing is a really simple practice of just returning to a good sound on a single note, and maybe you start with open notes, and then maybe a more problem note like like maybe D three is hard, and and see see how good of a sound you can get. And do that as you're practicing a tune that you want to be more musical. Maybe now I want to practice A3. Just always returning to your sound. Because people, as we learn new things, we get caught up in like trying to like do the next thing, but you really got to constantly return to just a simple good sound and then bring that into what you're practicing. Um, I have one more idea for you, Mary, and then, uh, and then I'll maybe move on unless you have a follow-up question. And this idea is to um, just practice looping in creative ways. And what will happen is as you loop things enough, it'll start to become a little bit more musical. They'll have more flow. So you can, like, an idea is a kind of cutting different parts of the tune and looping it. I sometimes call it cut and loop, or like a little practice window. So say you're doing Wildwood Flower, maybe you just practice a small loop. And then maybe you do a bigger loop and you're still like really trying to like make that sound good. I only added one note, maybe I'll add one more note. So we're taking this bigger phrase and we're cutting something smaller and you get a kind of an unexpected musical experience because you're used to hearing this whole phrase like but if you just cut out a piece and loop that it sounds a lot different all right and so by doing that you'll start to see the same piece and it'll open up musical possibilities for you and feeling the music differently. So anyway, I give all those ideas a try. I think transposition, looping, returning to uh, a single note. And so I think there was one other thing in there, but uh, um, all right. Soft and loud. Soft, loud, soft. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I want to take note. Yeah. Um, I'm taking notes too. See, because I want to just for the follow up, soft, loud, soft, um, transpose, cut and loop. Okay. All right. So very cool. Thank you for your question. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step by step course outline, color coded tabs, play along tracks, sheet music and much more. Thanks for watching the video club. Excellent. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.